Religion and politics don't mix. Separation of church and state. Don't impose your views on a pluralistic society. How often do we hear sentiments like these reverberate through the American national conversation? Too many Americans seem to think that the institutional separation of church and state means that religiously informed moral judgments are banned from public life. And while some of the most prominent figures in politics, including our current president, claim Christian belief is the foundation of their lives, they consistently vote and legislate in direct opposition to moral truths we can know by both divine revelation and reason. But we're not meant to live bifurcated lives as Catholics, the truth of the faith in one box, public policy issues in another. We're meant to evangelize everywhere, even in public life and through the exercise of our responsibilities as citizens. Here's why. Too much of politics today has deteriorated into a vicious bilateral exchange of recriminations. Debates look less like adult discussions and more like kindergarten temper tantrums, Twitter and cable news substituting for the playground. Catholic social teaching offers us a path beyond these siloed screaming matches and toward a way of conducting public life befitting adults, a way based in gospel principles and reason, one that champions the dignity of the human person and defines the requirements of authentic human community. It's this higher way of thinking that allows us to approach these unreasonable debates from a fundamentally different perspective and bring reason to them. But perhaps the most valuable element Catholics can bring to the table is a nobler version of freedom. Freedom itself is a misunderstood word, often taken as the equivalent of Frank Sinatra's antiphon, I did it my way. No genuine good can come from this. Just like no good can come from a drunken piano player who sits down to bang indiscriminately on the keys in any way he wants. He'll make sound and noise, for sure, but music is only possible when a pianist follows the disciplines of piano playing in improvising or plays according to the sheet music in front of him. Our political system works in much the same way. The mechanics of our republic are meant to facilitate human flourishing and advance the common good, to make success and happiness possible for a virtuous people, a people who strive to live in accordance with the truths built into the world and into us, just like the piano player who strives to play in accordance with music itself. The Founding Fathers recognized this, and some 200 years later, so did Pope John Paul II, when he reminded us that virtue is essential to democratic self-governance. Our American system is the world's best attempt to facilitate this kind of virtuous life for our people. But the system isn't indestructible. It must be renewed in every generation. The institutions of self-government demand the participation of a God-fearing people who understand that freedom is never free who respect our institutions of government and love our system well enough to know its fragility. As Catholics, that people must be us. So, get out there and get involved. Make your voice heard. Make faith-informed political choices. And where the road splits and the right path forward becomes murky, pray, then trust. I'm George Weigel of the Ethics and Public Policy Center, for Edify. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to hit subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss another episode from Edify.